Hello all, can we talk the little Aurora 100 again? I've managed to get out for another couple of flights with this, so I wanted to just show you what I've been up to and also touch on a couple of things we managed to miss from my review and a couple of things a few guys picked up on the YouTube comments. So first off, these little ATC LiPos, which I should point out as, as soon as I published the video and said, oh, these are out of stock, I can't order any, these came back in stock. So if you need some spare, you can get them now. Links, of course, down below as per normal. Now, I wanted to know what these would do, so I took it out on my first flight since the previous one, so second LiPo, and tortured it. I noticed the OSD showed it as being around 8.1 when it should have been more like 8.3, 8.4, but um, I really wanted to see what would happen because the battery sags quite a lot when you give it some beans anyway, so it hovers around very close to sort of the 6.7 mark for a lot of the time at the time you might be landing and what I noticed is as soon as it hit six on the OSD which is of course way lower than you'd really want to take a battery it dropped like a stone so I'm not really sure where the landing point is at the moment do I continue to stress the batteries to the point of death and get about three and a half minutes or do I come in much earlier mm, I don't know I'll figure that one out the other thing I did just before filming that video and I should mention it's a really grey day again so the camera doesn't perform very well but if people want to see the whole raw video there's a link down below. The other thing I did is just mess a little bit with the Super 8 settings just to give myself a little faster spin and roll there. Uh, these are the settings I made, just, just a little tweak really, the rest of it's stock. I also thought as I only had the one LiPo I'd test out on one of these. This is covered in a Velcro so you wouldn't know. It's um, an 850 two cell at um, 35C. It's a little uh, zippy. And to be fair, it's a bit of an old knackered battery. I use it as a spare in case I need a fat shark battery. And this almost died in the uh, initial lift off. So I'm, I'm interested to know what other people's battery experiences are, if you've got any, if there are alternates out there. But in the, me in the meantime, I'm just gonna have to wait for the official Aurora ones to come in before I can use them. Right, so things I managed to miss from part one and some of that's about the OSD. Similar to the MW OSD where you go mid throttle, your stick right and up. On this uh, particular Betaflight OSD you go that way and up and you get into a little menu as we can see here. And using the sticks you can go through as per the MWSD software and change some of your PIDs and profiles and all sorts of bits and pieces. So a very useful feature. That said, I haven't really had to mess around with the PID tuning that much. It's just flown pretty well. The other thing is, someone put a comment on the last video, Jason G, hello Jason, who talked about uh, a fail safe issue. Um, although he wasn't sure if it was just on Flysky or not. So I took a quick look at this because the otherwise excellent manual didn't mention anything about the foul safe. There is um, the little bind button and normally on free sky, if you give it a short press, that will do a foul safe. Um, what I notice is it uses the beta flight foul safe settings, which I will just demo now. So if we look at the beta flight screen, we'll see that if we get an abnormal PWM rate from the receiver or no signal at all, then it will enter the first stage of failsafe, which is basically, it tries to go into sort of a hold mode. If nothing comes back within a second, it'll go to the second mode, which seems to be turn everything off and beep, which I will show you here. If we notice that's going mad, if we now shut the controller off, shuts off, starts beeping. So, so pretty useful for finding it if it goes down as long as the battery doesn't disconnect, of course. Now, I don't know what the situation is on the Flysky and the DSM2, uh, DSMX2, whatever it is for Spectrum receivers. I know Flysky never used to have a failsafe, it would just sort of carry on. So if anyone's got a Flysky receiver, I'd be interested to know what it did and I can update the video with some sort of text here or something. Because even if the receiver doesn't know about it, does it go into sort of an abnormal PWM rate which Betaflight can see and then put it into that foul safe mode? Don't know, I'd like to know. Okay, so let's get into the air for my third LiPo. 
And finally, we at last have some sun in the sky, so the picture and the camera won't be quite as bad as it normally is. Really weird start this one because the previous flight I had here was pretty good pitch over here and I changed it to use the Fat Shark Next Wave module and it doesn't seem as good as one of those uh, single diversity modules. I've also learned that setting your craft name to Curry Kitten means there's too many letters and it sort of blends into this very weird mode where I'm flying currently in Curry Kitten Air which um, doesn't really work. So as per last time, um, I'm loving it. It is so locked in. Every turn you do, it just does it. It turns on an absolute dime. Um, and I don't know if it's the combination of these props or the weight and the velocity and inertia it has, but it's so responsive. Uh, and as I said, the only thing I've tweaked so far is the super rate curve just to give my blips and rolls a little bit more but there is um, another one to do here aside from changing curry kit into curry k so it doesn't look quite so stupid on the screen i've noticed under full throttle i get a little bit of vibration so i'm going to try upping the uh, tpu breakpoint so it just puts the pids down a little bit when we go full throttle Aside from that, I'm not really noticing anything that's got any issues at all. I'm just really enjoying it. The only tragic thing about this is, of course, I only had that one battery. Um, and I even got to the point where I met another FPV who was just walking through the field who was very excited to see a little 100 size quad and asked me if I was going to fly it. And he was even more disappointed than me when I said, unfortunately, I'd already flown it and I didn't have any more lipos, but never mind. <laughs> At least I've ordered some. Now, one thing that is a little bit of a problem, if you're like me and you like the odd external angle, is trying to capture this on a GoPro. I've done several fly pasts and it was like a tiny bee's gone past me. This was actually the very closest one, which is practically hitting me which you can still only just about see in the resulting footage there. So I will be looking extremely forward to getting a whole host of lipos and I've just heard about some other ones that might be worth trying out so I'm going to try and grab hold of a few and report which ones are going to work best. But really this thing is so much fun. You you need a nice stack of lipos just to get a sort of a fun time in the in the field. Really, you don't want it to end. Anyway, at this point, this lipo has had it, and I'm doing my sort of half land half. I've run out of power. I will see you next time. Bye.